Hello everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself, Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. I hope you all are very good at all. And this is the video wherein I am going to discuss the current affairs for the month of February. So, you will see the thumbnail pe dekhi liya hoga that we are going to discuss the 100 most important questions from the month of February. So, I hope this video may prove itself useful for all of you. And if you have any feedbacks related to the video or related to the current affairs, then you can provide it in the comment section below. Okay. So, let's begin this video which is going to be a little lengthy so i'm not going to waste any single second from now onwards and let's begin i hope guys you are aware about this mobile application of ours and if you haven't downloaded it yet so let me tell you that you are missing a lot because this application does not only provide you with the exam updates as well as the youtube videos it also gives you update on the live sessions which we conduct and also provides you the a past year's papers okay so if you want to get your hands on all these features then why wait for anything else you can download it from the google play store okay so the first question is ki prime minister narendra modi ne kahan par jal jan abhiyan launch kya tha where has prime minister narendra modi launched the jal jan abhiyan so here guys sirohi is the right answer now what is the where is this sirohi so guys sirohi is a district in rajasthan the purpose of this campaign is to invite the people's participation for the conservation of water resources, water bodies like lakes, ponds, etc. Now related to the conservation and rejuvenation of water bodies, we have the Amrit Sarovar initiative also. In Jammu and Kashmir, Prime Minister Narendra Modi launched the Amrit Sarovar initiative. However, this initiative aims to rejuvenate the water bodies, especially lakes and ponds in every state of India. Okay. Now, my question from all of you is, you need to tell me how many ponds or water bodies will be taken care of under this initiative. Okay. The next question is, what is the total budget allocation for the defense sector in the union budget of this year? Basically, the upcoming year. So, the right answer is option A. 5.94 lakh crore is the total allocation for the defense sector. And let me tell you guys, defense is the topmost sector as far as the allocation is concerned. Okay, so let's have a look at the ministry-wise allocations. So, Ministry of Defense has got the maximum allocation that is 5.94 lakh crore. After that, road transport and highways has got the second highest allocation, then railways, then consumer affairs, food and public distribution, home affairs, chemicals, rural uh, development, agriculture and farmer welfare, communication. So these are topmost ministries which have got the high allocations and out of these, defense is again the maximum one. Now defense related, there is one more thing that the maximum allocation is given to defense sector but out of this allocation a major proportion goes to the pensions and the salaries of the defense personnel and in order to reduce this burden the Agni Veer Agni Path scheme was launched by the Ministry of Defense under which the Agni Veers will be hired for a maximum tenure of four years okay so do remember this point as well now here guys this picture basically tells you the seven pillars of importance which were highlighted in the union budget so basically in this year in 2023 to 2024 onwards the government is going to focus on inclusive development reaching the last mile basically sabka saath sabka vikas in order to uh, provide the services to each and every person of india reaching the last mile is one of the pillars of the union budget youth power Financial sector, green growth, unleashing the potential, infrastructure and investment. So these are the seven areas of focus for the government in the upcoming year. And do remember all these pillars. You can expect a question out of these in your upcoming exams. Now we are talking about the upcoming exams. So let me remind you guys, you can expect your RBI notification anytime soon. IFSCA notification has already been out. Okay. APFC 
uh, is already there in the market. So guys, these are the examinations and you can expect questions from the union budget in all these examinations, okay? So prepare the union budget, economic survey, and the government schemes really, really thoroughly, okay? Next question is, how much is the seafood exports target of India by the year 2025? So here, guys, USD 14 billion is the right answer. Last year, in 2021 to 2022, India had exported 7.76 billion worth of marine products and by 2025 we are expected to double this number we are expected to double the marine exports in value terms okay so do remember now guys this is the chart from the mapida website mapida is the marine products export development authority and this uh, organization has given this data so according to this data frozen shrimp has the highest contribution in india's seafood export both in terms of value and in terms of volume okay so this shows that out of the total exported products 58 percent of the products are shrimp and the total amount that we get in exchange of these products out of that total amount the maximum portion is again because of the shrimp okay so do remember the contribution of these products as well as the product which is the uh, which is the major export from india okay next question is where is india's first solid waste to hydrogen plant setup so here guys pune is the right answer now here what we are going to do from waste we are going to create hydrogen i hope all of you are aware that Nash national hydrogen mission is already under implementation by the government now what is the target so here this picture guys is very very important and uh, don't worry about the pdf you will get the pdf on the telegram channel so from there you can uh, revise the content given in the picture or if you want you can take a screenshot as well and try to memorize the content given in the picture again and again because this is a really really important mission okay so we are talking about the national hydrogen mission which aims to create or increase the hydrogen production capacity of india to 5 mmt uh, annual production okay 5 million metric tons of annual production of green hydrogen is targeted then we are planning to increase the electrolyzer capacity of india to 60 to 100 gigawatts then 125 gigawatt renewable energy capacity for green hydrogen generation and associated transmission network so these are the numbers which are important the next is that the total outlay approved for the national hydrogen mission is 19,744 crores. Then 1 lakh crore import savings would be there. If we are able to produce green hydrogen, then definitely we will be able to cut down on the import of hydrogen. Okay, We can use the green hydrogen in creation of more goods. 50 million metric tons of CO2 annual emissions averted. Obviously, when we are going to have the hydrogen, that is green hydrogen that is being produced from the renewable resources, then obviously the emissions would be cut down. Okay, So 50 million metric tons of emissions would be cut down by virtue of green hydrogen. 6 lakh jobs will be created and rupees 8 lakh crore investment would be in, uh, attracted by this green hydrogen sector. Okay, the next question is, where was the Global Technology Summit organized? Okay, so where was it organized? It was organized in Vishakhapatnam. I hope you are uh, aware of this fact that Andhra Pradesh government has changed its capital from Amravati to Visa Vishakhapatnam. Where is Indian Army organizing the Operation Sadbhavna? So here guys, Ladakh is the right answer. Who is this person? This person is Manoj Pandey, who is the present chief of the Indian Army. Okay. What is the target year set by the European Union to ban the sale of gas and diesel cars? So here, guys, 2035 is the year. Now, this news remains, uh, this topic remains in the news very often. Very often, European Union tells the uh, releases this news that it is going to ban the sale of gas and diesel cars because it wants to become a net zero emission area by the year 2050. Okay, 
so this is the target year of the european union okay and at present we have 27 nations as the members of european union bosnia is uh, in the procedure to get the membership of european union and if bosnia gets this membership then european union will have 28 members but right now it has only 27 members so do remember this point okay how many segments are there in this second global hackathon of rbi which is harbinger 2023 so here guys four segments are there so basically every kind of hackathon is organized so that the innovators can send their innovative solutions to tackle a specific kind of problem right so here we have four problems in consideration first problem is innovative easy to use digital banking services for differently able so divyang jano ke liye the people who are differently able for them we need to create technology okay digital payment technologies digital banking service technology so that it becomes easy for them to use for example if there is a person who is visually impaired then the technology should be such that it would provide the audio version of each and every update right so similarly for every kind of differently abled people uh, there should be digital banking solutions and for that the innovation uh, innovative solutions are invited by the rbi then we have reg tech solutions to facilitate more efficient compliance of the regulated entities okay problem three is exploring use of cases solutions for cbdc retail transactions including transactions in offline mode okay cbdc is one of the topics on which the government is working really hard to implement it government as in rbi so one problem statement is to create solution for cbdc retail payments as well as offline payments then fourth is increasing transactions per second throughput and scalability of blockchains okay now why am i telling you all these problem statements in detail the reason is that you can expect the question on each of these or any of these okay so please prepare all these problem statements for the harbinger hackathon 2023 now i would like to ask a question from all of you can any one of you tell me that the first edition of this hackathon was launched in which year okay so now let's move on to the next question which is where is india's first global support center of boeing located so what is the uh, right answer the right answer is guru gram when is the international childhood cancer day observed so what is the right answer february 12 is the right answer okay and uh, better survival is the theme international childhood cancer day okay my question from all of you is can you tell me the color of ribbon which is used to spread awareness about the childhood cancer which is celebrated on february 15 okay okay sorry guys it is february 15 and not february 12th okay now you can see this thing yourself that when you have a mentor sometimes a problem in important days so it is a very difficult thing guys according to me it is very difficult to memorize the numbers okay so what do i do i create my own fact cheat sheet wherein i just write the numbers so that i can remember the numbers for a longer period of time okay now my examination is not coming your examination is coming so what is needed here is your effort so put your efforts into it and create your own fact cheat sheet for the numbers because numbers are very hard to remember okay कुछ लोगों के पास ये टेक्निक होती है या फिर कुछ लोग गॉड गिफ्टेड भी होते हैं जिनको नंबर्स बहुत अच्छे से याद रहते हैं उनके लिए कुछ और चैलेंज होगा आइडेंटिफाई द चैलेंज व्हिच यू आर फेसिंग एज फार एज द करंट अफेयर्स आर कंसर्न्ड एंड देन ट्राई टू रिजॉल्व देम एंड इफ यू आर नॉट एबल टू रिजॉल्व देम यू कैन कम टू मी यू कैन आस्क मी इन द कमेंट सेक्शन और यू कैन आल्सो आस्क मी ऑन द डिस्कशंस फोरम ओके द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज वेयर वाज द 23rd एडिशन of the india international seafood show held so here guys kolkata is the right answer now we have knowledge nugget for you so department of commerce has picked an ambitious target of usd 8868 million for ma marine ex products export for 2022 to 2023 which require a growth rate of about 15 percent of the previ previous year 
target to achieve this target okay now what is the important point here the important point is this that for the current year the department of commerce has fixed a specific fixed a specific target that is usd 8868 million worth of marine products export okay and this is the most important uh, target i would say this is the most important fact which can be asked from you apart from this do not forget to remember the addition which municipal corporation has launched the green bond for setting up the solar power plant so here indore municipal corporation is the right answer first of all let me tell you that it is for the first time in india that a municipal corporation has launched a green bond specifically for a solar power plant theek hai then second thing of importance here is that sebi has recently released its guidelines for the green bonds in which it had introduced two subsets of the green bonds that is blue bond and your yellow bond theek hai so do remember blue bond and yellow bonds are the subsets of the green bond so sometimes you may encounter the terms like green bond has been issued for the specific purpose of creating solar energy or for marine energy and they may mean that it is a blue bond or yellow bond okay i hope you are getting my point the point is ki kabhi kabhi aapko aisa lag sakta hai kabhi kabhi in the news you may feel that the topic is talking about the green bond but actually they mean yellow bond or blue bond okay because these terms can be used interchangeably okay but here the catch is that the term has not been used interchangeably because this uh, guideline has been released recently and this bond is uh, is also released recently the green bond here means the green bond only not the yellow bond as far as the news article is concerned or we have to stick to the information given to us okay so this much is important now one more thing that we are talking about the municipal corporation bonds so municipal corporation bonds are also called the muni bonds theek hai bangalore was the first municipal corporation which had launched the municipal bond and then in 2017 pune launched the municipal bond in collaboration with a us agency usaid and recently vadodara has also launched the municipal bond in collaboration with a foreign agency and thus pune and vadodara become first and second municipal corporations to launch the municipal bonds in collaboration with an international agency do remember these points next question is which of the following statements is are correct with respect to the kavach 2023 a national level hackathon first statement is the hackathon has been launched by aicte and ministry of education the hackathon has been launched by ugc ministry of education and bureau of police research and development the hackathon has been launched to innovate on the cyber security and cyber crime challenges so here guys option a and Op, uh, statement 1 and 3 are the correct uh, statements so option c is the right answer okay because aicte uh, aicte and ministry of education are involved and your bureau of police research and development is also involved in this hackathon but ugc is not involved okay so ugc is not a part of this hackathon apart from this we are also clear with the purpose that is to innovate on cyber security and cyber crime challenges which iit host the international center of excellence excellence on dam safety so here guys iit rudki is the right answer now iit rudki plus central water commission these two organizations have established this dam safety center of excellence as far as the center uh, water commission is concerned so remember that it is under the ministry of jal shakti and it is uh, one of the premier technical institutions under the ministry of jal shakti Union cabinet has approved the signing of an MOU between India and Dash for cooperation in the field of agriculture and allied sectors under the MOU a Dash India Agriculture Working Group is to be constituted which will be responsible for the supervision review and assessment of the implementation of this MOU as well as for establishing frequent communication and coordination so here child guys is the right answer 
can any one of you tell me what is the capital and currency of child in the comment section below what is india's rank in the services trade restrictiveness index so what is the right answer the right answer is 47th so this is the rank of india 47th is the rank of india can any one of you tell me which organization releases this index okay you can put your answers in the comments or you can also give me your answers through the live chat i am here in order to provide you the uh, provide you the right answer okay in the pre, uh, in the comments or in the live chat also okay so 47th is the rank of india in the services trade restrictiveness index uh, one more thing that uh, a total of 136 countries were there out of this 47th is a good rank that india has got okay so japan uk netherland czech republic chile these are the top 5 countries israel india russia thailand indonesia these are the bottom 5 and i'm so sorry it's the 50 a total of 50 countries are there okay so a fifth a total of 50 countries were measured in the services trade restrictiveness index and uh, oecd has released this index and i have already given you the answer it is oecd which has released this index do remember what is the net worth requirement for the payment aggregators to receive license so here guys 25 crore is the right answer now do listen to me carefully in the first year of getting the license the payment aggregators will have to have a minimum net worth of 15 crore rupees in the second year of operation they need to become a 25 crore company okay they need to have a net worth of 25 crores okay and here the question is not specifying about the year so obviously the ultimate amount is asked from you because the word minimum is also not here and the year is also not provided so there is no specific detail that has been given to you regarding the net worth so what will you do in this case you will mention 25 crore as the answer because ultimately the limit is 25 crore which all the payment aggregate aggregators will have to attain theek hai and i hope you know what is a payment aggregator these are basically the payment gateways which the organizations which provide the infrastructure for facilitating the payments okay so the payment aggregators will be payment gateways but all payment gateways will not be the payment aggregators because the basic difference between a payment gateway and a payment aggregator is that the aggregators take the money they facilitate the payment and they pool the money and then they return it to the merchants after a specified period of time specified period of time okay so this pooling of money is there in the aggregators but it is not a condition in the gateways payment gateways basically provide you the infrastructure to facilitate the payment and the money is credited in the merchants account theek okay? hai directly so that's the difference i hope this distinction between a payment gateway and a payment aggregator is clearly told you uh, clearly taught to you by karnima ma'am in the rbi 247 session and if you have not seen that session then after this session do watch the payment aggregator session by karnima ma'am because there the new guidelines related to the payment aggregators were taught in detail by her okay which payment bank has gone live with upi lite a feature enabled by the npci for multiple small value upi transaction so here guys paytm payment bank is the right answer which has gone live with the upi lite now as far as the upi lite is concerned so let me tell you that for one time the maximum limit is rupees 200 one time as in one transaction if you want to uh, buy a good then that good should be of rupees 200 value beyond that you cannot use upi lite for making the payment okay for per transaction 200 is the limit for the recharge you can do rupees 2000 worth of recharge twice in a day okay so the daily limit is 4000 but in one time you can just transfer rupees 2000 in your upi lite and then in another transaction you need to add 2000 and thus your daily charge would be rupees 4000 but 
one transaction should one recharge should be of 2000 rupees and per transaction is 200 so these are some of the digits associated with upi light and you can definitely encounter any question related to th them in your exam which bank has launched the facility of issuance of ebg electronic bank guarantee in association with national e governance services uh, limited so guys what is the right answer here which bank has launched this service so it is indian overseas bank electronic bank guarantee what is a bank guarantee the bank guarantee is given by the bank to the uh, merchant especially in the case of exports and imports okay trade ke cases may be diya jata and the basic idea behind this bank guarantee is that if the merchant uh, fails in making you the payment then the bank will provide you the payment okay so that is the bank guarantee in a very layman's term next question is about the ustan bismillah khan yuva puraskar which has been given for these these years okay for three years the awards have been given simultaneously a total of one to 102 artists have been given this award now regarding ustad bismillah khan yuva puraskar you need to know that it is given up to 40 years of age and it was launched in 2006 now the question asks you the prize money which is given in under this award so 25000 is the prize money how many fields have been selected by india which will be considered for trading trading of ca carbon credits in the international carbon market under the mechanism of the paris agreement on climate change so 13 sectors have been selected what is the bilateral trade between india and uae during april 20 april to november 2022 so bilateral trade is dollar 57.8 billion i hope you know that with uae we have a cepa agreement that is a free trade agreement which aims to increase the bilateral trade between india and uae up to 100 billion us dollars okay next question is which phase of the sagar parikrama has been launched by the department of fisheries so here guys it was the third phase that has been launched by the department of fisheries and the basic idea of this sagar parikrama is to tell the states which are there in the coastal regions about the schemes of the government of india for the fishermen so that their prosperity and their welfare can be attained what is the share of India in the global fish production as per a PIB release? So here 8% is the right answer. Where is North India's first nuclear power plant being set up? So it is being set up in Fatehabad district of Haryana. Okay. Now if you see in the news, you would find Gorakhpur name. Okay. But Gorakhpur is a place in Fatehabad district where this plant will be located specifically okay this is the particular point where the plant will be established but do not confuse it with the gorakhpur of up okay so do remember that it is the gorakhpur place in the fatahabad district of haryana which state has announced to introduce ai traffic signals in the state budget for 2023 to 2024 so guys it is karnataka which has announced to introduce the AI traffic signals in the state okay in the coming year which country has recently lifted its temporary ban uh, on the import of frozen seafood from India so here guys Qatar is the right answer okay now do remember Doha is the capital of Qatar and Rial is the currency of Qatar recently FIFA World Cup took place in Qatar can any one of you tell me which uh, football club won that FIFA World Cup next question is what is India's rank in the global labor resilience index 2023 so what is the rank of India the rank of India is 65th okay out of 136 countries which country is developing the neom project at a cost of rupees uh, usd 500 billion so here guys saudi arabia is the right answer now saudi arabia is also developing a muraba city okay i have the pictures for you so this is the muraba city uh, 
which is going to be in the middle of Saudi Arabia. Okay, and this is the Neom project. Okay, which is going to be this kind of a city. Okay, you can clearly see it looks like a narrow lane, and in this lane, the entire city will be built, and it is going to be sustainable in nature. Okay, that's the basic concept of this Neom project. However, this project is right now in the imagination or vision of the South Go Saudi Arabia government, but for the Muraba city, the Saudi Arabian government. Uh, the public investment fund of the Saudi Arabian government has already allocated amount, okay, uh, has already allocated the money, okay. So, you, that is the uh, progress in this city and do remember that both of these cities are being developed in the same country, Saudi Arabia. Which bank has launched the Amrit Kalash, a new retail term deposit scheme with a specific duration and benefits like a higher interest rate? So, here guys, the largest bank of India, State Bank of India has launched it. Now we are talking about the highest interest rate. So 7.1% is going to be the interest rate for the normal citizens. And 7.6% will be the interest rate for the senior citizens. And it has a specific tenure. So the specific tenure is 400 days. Okay. Delhi Metro has launched India's first ever indigenously developed train control and supervision system that is IATS. Uh, for operations on its first corridor, on which line is the system operated? So it is on the very old line of the Delhi Metro, that is red line. Okay. India's first hybrid sounding rocket has been developed under the Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam Satellite Launch Vehicle Mission 2023. Which company has collaborated with the Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam International Foundation to launch the Satellite Vehicle Mission 2023? So here guys, Martin Foundation and Space Zone India. These two organizations have collaborated with the Abdul Kalam International Foundation for this specific Abdul Kalam Satellite Launch Vehicle mission. Okay, so option D is the right answer. Who is the chair of the panel on Mission Karam Yogi? So it is Union Cabinet Secretary Rajiv Guba uh, who is the chair of this panel of Mission Karam Yogi. Frederick and Henrik Christian and Mary Elizabeth are the crown prince and princess of which country? So here Denmark is the right answer. Recently both of them have visited India and because of that visit this question is here. Where was the Asia Economic Dialogue organized? In Pune it was organized. With which country is India planning to create a virtual trade corridor to facilitate, facilitate quicker Clearance of shipments. So here UAE is the right answer. In which Indian state will MasterCard and Access Development Services launch the mainstreaming agriculture through networks and development initiatives project? So in short form, the project is called as Mandi. Okay. So the full form of Mandi is also important. So do remember the full form. The full form is mainstreaming agriculture through networks and development initiative okay so four to five times if you devise the full form or if you uh, repeat the full form then definitely you will be able to remember the full form of Monday okay so Assam is the right answer here okay and the basic idea of this is to leverage technology use technology for leveraging or uh, enhancing the agricultural activities in the state of Assam. So that's the basic idea. Which UT has launched the sensor-based smart agriculture project for integration of agriculture with technology driven by artificial intelligence and IoT for automation of practices, enhanced resource use efficiency and profitability. So here JNK is the right answer. Okay. Which addition of the international Khajuraho dance festival 2023 was held in Khajurao, Madhya Pradesh. 49th edition of this festival was recently organized. Who heads the textile advisory group? So Suresh Kotak, uh, Suresh Kotak uh, is the chair of this textile advisory group which was created last year by the Ministry of Textile. Okay. 
Recently, the Ministry of Education has launched the Jadui Pitara, and the basic idea of this Jadui Pitara, which is basically a kit, is to increase the interest of children in studies. Okay, therefore, this kit will have playbooks, toys, puzzles, posters, flashcards, storybook, etc., etc., for the children. The catch here is that the uh, kit will be available in the regional languages as well. And I hope all of you are aware that the focus of National Education Policy 2020 is also to increase the interest of children in studies so that they do not take studies as a burden. Rather, they take interest in the studies. That is why the focus of the primary education was shifted from English to vernacular medium. Right? That was one of the key highlights of the NEP 2020. And there was a debate also that if the students study in the vernacular, then they would be weak in English language. That's, that is something another matter. But right now, the focus here is that the children's in interest should be increased in the studies. And for that, the Jadui Pitara has been launched. But the question here is, in how many languages is the Pitara launched? So here, 13 languages at present are available. Uh, with the course of time, more languages will be included. Next question is, India has joined Agriculture Innovation Mission for Climate to accelerate investment and support for climate smart agriculture and food systems innovation. India joins, joined the AIM-4C on the margins of I2U2 uh, summit I2U2 Business Forum in Abu Dhabi, which of the following countries is among the founding members of the initiative, okay? So first of all, guys, let me tell you that this I2U2 initiative is uh, India, Israel, India, Israel, United States and UAE's initiative, which is also called as the West Code. However, this does not have any uh, defense or military ramification. The basic idea of this West Quad is to promote trade. Okay? So that is the basic idea. Now, guys, which of the following is among the founding members of the AM4C initiative? So here, guys, UAE is the right answer. US and UAE have launched this initiative. Where is the Pangong So Lake located? So in Arunachal Pradesh, th sorry, in Ladakh, this is located. Pangong So Lake is located in Ladakh where the conflict was there between China and India. Which state has launched the robotic scavenger named Band Bandicoot to clean sewage? So Kerala has launched this uh, robot for the first time. An Indian submarine docked in Indonesia to strengthen bilateral relations as per the diplomatic military outreach to Asian countries. What is the name of the submarine? So, guys, the answer is INS Sindhukeshari. With which country does India conduct the exercise Desert Flag 8th? Okay, so this is the 8th edition of this Desert Flag exercise. So, with UAE, this exercise is conducted. Exercise Cobra Warrior is a dash exercise. So it is an Air Force exercise between India and UK. Which country has curtailed its beef exports due to the mad cow disease? So Brazil has uh, curbed its beef exports. Now let me tell you that Brazil is the world's largest exporter of beef and China is the world's largest importer of beef. Okay, So do remember these facts. Which country has signed an agreement with the International Solar Alliance to increase the use of solar energy in the country? So Bangladesh, guys, is the right answer. I hope you know that ISA is India's first treaty-based organization located in India itself. And with France, with the collaboration of France, we have launched this ISA. Do remember that at present, India is the president of ISA. What is India's rank in the international Intellectual Property Index 2023 of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce Global Innovation Policy Center. So 42nd, guys, is the right answer. India's rank is 42nd. Which of the following statement is are true about the Aat Nirbhar Clean Plant Program? First of all, let me tell you that in the union budget this year, the plant program was organized. So 
the first statement is that the central government is planning to set up 20 clean plant centers. The clean plant centers will reduce the time period for quarantine of horticulture crops to eight, eight months from two years at present. National Horticulture Board will be the nodal agency for setting up the clean plant program. The clean plant centers will provide services of disease diagnostics, therapeutics, uh, multiplying of plant and generation of mother plants. So which one is the right answer? So here guys, let me tell you that the government is planning to set up 10 clean plant centers. Then the time period by these clean plant centers would be reduced to six months, not eight months. National Horticulture Board is the implementing agency of this program at present and the plant center will provide the services of disease diagnostics, therapeutics, uh, multiplying of plant and generation of mother plants. So these are the services which the clean plant centers will provide. So here what is the right answer? Option B is the right answer. Okay. Now let me just give you a brief introduction of the clean plant program. The clean plant program basically aims to create these clean plant centers and the basic idea of these centers is to quarantine the plants which will be imported in India. Okay, many of you must be in a shock that do plants also face the quarantine uh, period but guys yes plants and every kind of bioorganism living or dead has to face the quarantine period in the other nation and this is done in order to prevent any kind of disease spread. Okay, this is why quarantine is done in all types of bioorganisms. Ko. So here plants are also quarantined, uh, are put in quarantine and at present two years time is taken by the quarantine, uh, is taken for the quarantine and this time period will be reduced to six months. So that is the basic idea of this Atmanirbhar Clean Plant Project and at present do remember the number 10 is just in the planning stage. It may happen that you would find in a news article that the government has announced to create 15 clean plant program, uh, clean plant centers or 20 clean plant centers, but that would be a future development, okay? So this is also correct and that will also be correct if the government changes the number, okay? We just need to keep a track of it and you don't have to worry about anything because I am providing you the daily updates in the daily current affairs, PDFs as well as spotlight monthly current affairs, okay? You just need to follow them. As per a news article of February 2023, the Archaeological Survey of India has discovered a 1300-year-old stupa, Buddha's stupa, right in the middle of a mining site in Odisha's Dash district. So, Jajpur district is the right answer. Which of the following is the correct projection of unemployment rate by the periodic labor force survey? I hope you know that PLFS for the year... 2021 to 2022 has been released. PLFS is uh, basically released to assess the employment scenario in the nation between June to July. Okay, so that is the time period of PLFS. Do remember this question. It can be a static question in either of your phases, phase one or phase two. Dono mein se kisi bhi phase mein question pucha ja sakta hai. Now one more thing that 2017 is the year in which the PLFS was started. The first edition of PLFS was launched in 2017. Okay. Now what is the right answer? The correct projection of unemployment is this. 4.1% for 2021 to 2022. Now let's have a look at the unemployment rate for the preceding three years. Okay. And for different categories, for the entire nation, for the urban areas, for rural areas, for male population, for female population. So for the overall population, the unemployment rate was 4.1%, which you can clearly see is decreasing over the years. In FY20, uh, 4.8% was the unemployment rate. Then 2020 to 2021, 4.2% was the unemployment rate. However, this is the year of COVID when everything was in lockdown, but still the unemployment rate was decreasing. Then the year next, the next year, 2021 to 2022, the unemployment rate has also uh, rate has also decreased to 4.1%. This can happen because when everything was opened up, it may happen that the uh, organizations would have uh, employed more people. Okay, 
now as far as the urban unemployment is concerned so again you can clearly see a declining trend in rural again a declining trend then male unemployment rate is also declining and the female unemployment rate is also declining in india over the years now which data do you need to remember the entire data you can expect any question out of this data in your examination in phase 2 as well as in phase 1 okay plfs is a very crucial document you cannot afford to skip the plf plfs and any fact given in the plfs okay and i have just nitpicked just hand picked these facts because otherwise there were many numbers in the plfs document but i have just hand picked some of it which i found very important from the exam perspective okay so yahan pe ab iske aage bargaining mat karna sare numbers aapko yaad karne padenge theek hai next question is in the plfs of 2021 to 2022 the labor force participation rate of urban area was 49.7 and the rural areas lfpr was 57.5 which of the uh, following reasons appropriately justifies the gap okay so here guys you can clearly mark this question as a difficult one now this question is also not judging your factual information it is judging your conceptual knowledge okay तो इससे बस एक इंडिकेशन है और एक ही रिक्वेस्ट मैं आप सभी को करना चाहती हूँ दैट अप अडॉप्ट एन इंटीग्रेटेड अप्रोच फॉर योर एग्जाम डू नॉट जस्ट प्रिपेयर फॉर द फेज वन डू नॉट जस्ट प्रिपेयर फॉर द फेज टू प्रिपेयर फॉर बोथ द फेजेस टूगेदर ओके बिकॉज इफ यू डेवलप दी कॉन्सेप्चुअल कॉन्सेप्चुअल अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ द टॉपिक्स देन ओनली यू विल बी एबल टू रिटेन द फैक्ट्स फॉर द फेज वन एज वेल एंड यू कैन टैकल सच क्वेश्चन यू हैव सीन द ट्रेंड ऑफ आर बी आई एग्जामिनेशन राइट इट इज बिकमिंग मोर एंड मोर डिफिकल्ट एंड इट इज शिफ्टिंग टू कॉन्सेप्चुअल एंड एनालिटिकल क्वेश्चन मोर ओके सो दिस इज वन ऑफ द क्वेश्चन ओके now what can be the most appropriate reason for this low female labor participation rate in india especially in urban areas and the difference between rural and urban areas okay in urban areas we have more employment opportunities but still the female labor force participation rate is lower in comparison to the rural areas what is the reason the reason is the low female participation in urban employment theek okay? hai so that's the stark difference between the Uh, that is the reason for the stark difference between the labor force participation rate of the urban and the rural areas because female participation is lower in urban areas theek hai now here is the data of the lfpr from the plfs of fy22 so you can clearly see the overall labor force participation rate is increasing over the years labor force participation rate is basically the people who are employed in the nation for a specific period of time that is from june 2021 to july 2022 theek okay? hai so uh, the labor force participation rate for the entire nation is increasing and for the year fy22 it was 55.2% that means out of the total uh, employable po population 55.2% people were employed okay they were already working then in urban areas 47 49.7% people were working rural mein 57.5% males ke comparison mein when we see the working population of males then it is 77.2% out of the total population then 32.8% for the females out of the total population okay and if we see the rural urban divide in it then definitely the rural female labor force participation would be really high in comparison to the urban areas okay and this does not mean that the uh, economic opportunities which are given to women in the rural areas is better and thus the women of rural areas are better off than the women in the urban areas that is not the reason guys the reason is that in the rural areas the first of all the work that is given to the women is majorly of the contract labor कॉन्ट्रैक्चुअल होता है या फिर लेबर काइंड ऑफ वर्क होता है सो दैट इज गिवन टू द वुमेन एंड इन अर्बन एरियाज जस्ट बिकॉज द अर्निंग मेम्बर्स ऑफ द फैमिली हैव अ बेटर इनकम दैट इज वाई दे रिस्ट्रिक्ट और दे डो नॉट अलाउ देर वुमेन टू वर्क और वुमेन दैम सेल्फ डो नॉट वॉन्ट टू वर्क आउट साइड बिकॉज देयर फैमिली मेम्बर्स आर अर्निंग गुड ओके सो दैट इज द रीजन दैट इज वाई द अर्बन एंड रूरल लेबर फोर्स पार्टिसिपेशन रेट हैज सच अ स्टार्क डिफरेंस 
ओके सो नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज फ्रॉम द फीमेल वर्क फोर्स पार्टिसिपेशन रेट ड्यूरिंग 2021. Now I hope all of you are aware of the difference between the workforce participation rate and the labor force participation rate. Workforce participation rate includes all the people who are seeking to work, seeking to work as in who are willing to work and who are working at present. Okay. On the other hand, labor force participation rate only accounts for those people who are working. at present okay so it will only consider the people who are doing a job and it will consider all those people who are seeking the job as well okay so uh what is the female uh, workforce participation rate it is 44.7% okay so it is 31.7% i'm so sorry guys it is 31.7% in total okay so as far as the male workforce participation rate is concerned it is 73.8 which is very very high in comparison to females rural wala is again higher in comparison to the urban areas then we have 52.9 as the overall workforce participation rate that means out of the total population which can work uh 52.9 people are uh, either see uh, are uh, in the workforce okay they are seeking work or they are employed okay with which country has india officially launched the young professionals scheme so uk guys is the right answer the basic idea of this young professional scheme is to exchange the people from india between india and uk who want to work in each other's land okay that's the basic idea georgia meloni will be the chief guest and keynote speaker at the 8th raisena dialogue 2023 in the taj palace hotel New Delhi. She is the Prime Minister of which country? So she is the Prime Minister of Italy. Which state launched India's first AI chatbot, Ama, Crush AI for the agriculture sector? So Odisha has launched it. Which of the following statement is are is are incorrect about the trends in maternal mortality 2000 to 2020 report of the UN? So. these are the five statements i am giving you the time guys 5 seconds read all the statements and then try to figure out the answer i hope guys you have read the statements by now so the right answer here is option e none of these statements are incorrect that means all of these statements are correct so let's have a look at these statements According to the report, two lakh eighty-seven thousand women globally died from a maternal cause in twenty twenty. The global MMR maternal mortality rate in twenty twenty was two twenty-three per lakh live birth. That means if a uh, one lakh children are born, then uh, children live children are born. We are not taking the still births into account. So out of those live births, two twenty-three. mothers are dying because of those live births because of those births 223 women are dying okay the average annual rate of reduction in the global mmr from 2000 to 2020 was 2.1% that means har saal 2.1% ka reduction aaya hai in the global mmr maternal mortality rate the rate of reduction uh in the global M mmr if we take into account the 20 year period from 2000 to 2020 then the reduction is 34.3% india's mmr is 103 okay per 1 lakh live birth okay so agar hamare desh mein 1 lakh bacche paida ho rahe hain zinda to unki upar 103 mai aisi hain jinhone apni jaan gawai hai after giving the birth to the children now sustainable development goal target 3.1 is to reduce the mmr to 70 to less than 70 per 1 lakh live birth by 2030 sustainable development goals were launched in 2015 and they came into force in 2016 to be implemented by the year 31st december 2030 okay New Delhi based ICRIER Process Center for Internet and the Digital Economy has released the state of India's digital economy report. The report focuses on the indicators uh, which are specific to the Indian economy. The report traces the digital transformation through its 
chip framework what does h stand for in this framework so guys h stands for harness okay connect harness innovate and partner these are the four pillars of the framework of this state of india's digital economy report okay and in short form it is called chip now guys this report does not give any kind of ranking to any state or anything like that does not happen in this report it basically tells us the overview of the digital landscape of india how uh, have we progressed in the digital technologies and how we are doing in that and uh, this is guys a very crucial picture which is telling us the different segments in which we have made the achievement okay so for example in finance we have the bheem we have upi so these are the two most important technologies which are taking the digital uh, ecosystem of india to a next level then as far as the health ecosystem is concerned so we had the covin which was used for the vaccination then we have ayushman bharat digital health accounts then uh, as far as the commerce is concerned so we are developing the ondc uh, that is going to be the one platform for all the small and medium uh, not the farmers but the uh, merchants question number 61 is that isro has conducted the recovery trials for the gaganyaan mission in a private pool in collaboration with indian navy the trials were conducted at the water survival test facility kochi gaganyaan is india's first human space mission to be launched in 2024 the indian astronauts are receiving training from dash agency for the gaganyaan mission so here guys ross cosmos is the right answer which company has launched india's first traffic management system for drones to allow the operators to choose their routes so sky air is the right answer recently isro has launched the small satellite launch vehicle from andhra pradesh shri harikota uh, with eos 7 azadi sat 2 and genus first satellites on board which company mentored the 750 girls students to prepare the azadi sat 2 satellite so here space kids india is the right answer where will the minister for communications electronics and information technology and railways shri ashnavi uh, sorry ashmini vaishnav inaugurate the national philatelic exhibition amrit pax 2023 so new delhi guys is the right answer with which regional organization has india set up a new trade and technology council to focus on green technologies connectivity and resilient supply chains so Euro european union is the right answer recently the third asian digital ministers meeting with india was conducted virtually on the theme of synergy towards a sustainable digital future the meeting was chaired by india and dash india asian digital work plan 2023 will be adopted at the meeting sorry it was adopted at the meeting this year the asian summit will be hosted by dash which will be the chair of dash as well so what is the answer of uh, of all these dashes the right answer is option a india and philippines hosted the third asian digital ministers meeting then indonesia is the chair for the asian in 2023 and asian defense ministers meeting plus uh, is also the forum which is uh, chaired by indonesia the next question is that the director general of gst intelligence and national forensic science university have signed an mou to set up the digital forensic laboratories okay now we have to identify the correct statements with regard to the above paragraph which basically tells you about these digital forensic laboratories and this mou so the right uh, the statements are the digital the directorate general of gst intelligence is the apex intelligence organization under the aegis of goods and services network the nfsu is an institution of national importance established to promote the studies and research in forensic sciences and related fields nfsu is the first and only institution in the field of forensic sciences which is located in lucknow 
so here guys only second is the right answer because nfsu is located in delhi and dggi does not uh, work under the G goods and services network rather it is under the defense uh, department of finance which of the following payment services providers have recently allowed the linking of credit cards with upi so here the right answer is paytm what is the theme of the world pulses day 2023 pulses for a sustainable future is the theme when do we celebrate this day this is your question do tell me who has won the hyderabad e prix first of all let me tell you that it was the first ev formula 1 race okay so it was held in india for the first time okay and in hyderabad it was held obviously now who has won this so it is jean eric uh, from france who has won this championship from which country is india planning to bring 12 cheetahs in india so these cheetahs have arrived in india already and they have arrived from south africa so let me tell you from namibia also we had eight cheetahs and from south africa now we have 12 cheetahs theek hai all these cheetahs have been introduced in the kuno national park in madhya pradesh Which state has launched the Wetland X C2 conservation establishment plan in collaboration with France? So here Rajasthan is the right answer. We are talking about the wetlands. So let me tell you, from India we have 75 wetlands which are in the Ramsar Wetland Convention, and we have two wetlands on the Montreux Accord of. the ramsar convention theek hai so this montreux accord only list the wetlands which are on the verge of extinction or which are in extreme danger and we have two wetlands in india which are in the extreme danger first is kelyolado national park and second is loktak lake in assam loktak lake theek hai so this kelyolado national park is in rajasthan and in this park this center has been established this uh, wetland xc2 conservation establishment has been located okay so do remember these points which edition of the indian rice congress was conducted at the national rice research institute at kattak odisha so second edition was organized india has signed an agreement with dash to export the alh mk3 helicopters to the country the agreement was signed in january 2022 so guys can any one of you tell me the right answer the right answer is mauritius which country hosts the world government summit on an annual basis so guys uae is the right answer as per the revised estimates of the direction of tax collection in 2022 to 2023 released by the cbdt the direct tax collection has increased by dash percent and the total tax collection was 15.67 lakh crore so right answer is 24% from the previous year we have seen a growth of 24% in the direct tax collection who is the governor of ladakh so bd mishra has been appointed as the new governor of ladakh Uh, when is the safer internet day observed so february 12 is the right answer what is the theme of the rbi financial literacy week 2023 good financial behavior your savior which country has been hit by cyclone gabriel so it is new zealand with which company has ministry of electronics and it collaborated to launch g20 stay safe online campaign to increase the awareness on online safety so it is meta which is the first wto member to ratify the agreement on fisheries subsidies so it is switzerland which bank has recently received approval from the department of financial services under the ministry of finance to have four executive directors instead of three so it is guys indian bank Which company owns the Biz Khata business platform? So, Airtel Payment Bank owns this Biz Khata uh, platform. 
which life insurance company has launched the sustainable equity fund so guys bajaj alliance life insurance has launched this fund which international organization has for formally agreed to join the india hydrogen alliance and increase support for green hydrogen projects across india with indicative funding of euro 1 billion so what is the right answer here which organization has announced to join the india hydrogen alliance so here guys european investment bank is the right answer and let me tell you it is a part of the european union investing agency of the european union which company has launched its helicopter services on six routes in the state of assam under the rca sudan scheme so pawan hans limited is the right answer which state ut has launched the alternate agriculture system for sustainability project uh, to promote the organic farming <coughs> so here jammu kashmir is the right answer so we have two projects of the jammu kashmir ek sensor based smart agriculture and second one is this alternate agriculture system for sustainability theek hai so these are the two projects launched by the same place same administration that is jammu kashmir administration asian development bank has approved the usd 130 million loan to increase the agriculture productivity and promote horticulture ag agri businesses to raise farmers income to which state okay so what is the right answer here the right answer is assam which company has rebranded itself as zuno general insurance limited so it is edelweiss general insurance so guys uh, there was a question uh, which was asked by my student on the discussion forum whether you should remember the company specific news or not but let me tell you guys company specific questions have been asked in the examination in sebi nabard rbi okay so even if it is one question do not take a chance because this one question can be the uh, can prove itself to be very important for all of you okay kyunki yahi aapko is par ya us par leke ja sakta hai theek hai to agar ek question bhi aa raha hai to bhi important hai aap padhiye company related news and i have seen this myself that not only one question there are many question at least two to three questions related to a specific company has been asked there were questions like penalties imposed on the companies okay so ye to fir bhi bahut acha question hai iska to kafi fir bhi aap is question ki to respect karo fir bhi kyunki penalty jaise cheezon se bhi question aa rahe hain theek hai to aapko padhna hai yahan pe ye cheez clarify ho gayi hai next question is what rank has been given to india by the international civil aviation organizations universal safety oversight audit program report okay let me tell you that this uh, audit program is an annual audit program which is done by the international civil aviation organization let me tell you in montreal it has its headquarters okay so what was the rank given it is 55th choose the correct number of pairs from the options given below so here on the one hand you have the portals and on the other hand you have the ministries so let me tell you g dam portal of the ministry of power and the khanan prahari portal of the ministry of coal these are the two right options thus only two pairs are correct from these pairs the next question is the comptroller and auditor general of india is hosting the dash SEO Supreme Auditor Institutions lead leaders meeting in dash out of the 8 SEO SAI member countries the heads of the size from four countries that is Kazakhstan Tajikistan Kyrgyzstan Uzbekistan alongside the CAG of India are expected to take part in the three day multilateral event the event was organized on the theme of integrating emerging technologies in audit during the event india signed two mous with the dash and dash to strengthen the cooperation in the field of auditing what is the right answer the right answer is option d sixth edition of the sco meeting was organized in lucknow with kyrgyzstan and sorry with kazakhstan and tajikistan the mous were signed okay and the basic idea is to introduce the technologies in the field of audit now guys my question from all of you is can any one of you tell me who is the current cag of india and recently the controller accounts uh, general of india was also appointed so this is also your 
task do tell me who is the uh, accounts general of india and the controller and auditor general of india the next question is india is planning to launch a global initiative called mira or millet international initiative for research and awareness for global coordination of millet research programs india will contribute the initial money for mira initiative while each g20 member will have to contribute its budget in the form of a membership fee the indian institute of millet research in dash will be supported as the center of excellence for sharing the best practices research and technologies at the international level so where is this institution located so it is located in hyderabad now one more thing related to this initiative that this initiative will be introduced during the g20 summit okay right now it has been it has not been launched dash has launched the india's first marine spatial planning framework to balance growth alongside the sustainable management of ocean resources and coastal environment preservation the framework is a part of a pact under the indo dash integrated ocean initiative so what is the right answer the right answer is option c puducherry and norway okay in such type of questions you can clearly see puducherry has been given in two options theek hai and only the other country is different theek hai to ye soch ke mat option ko mark karna ki agar do mein puducherry diya hai suppose if you don't know the answer of this question and you have to make the guess work so i am telling you ki guess work kabhi bhi aise mat karna ki do option mein agar hame same same mil raha hai to iska matlab yahi sahi hoga zaruri nahi hai bahut बहुत ज़्यादा टाइम्स पे ऐसा होता है कि ऐसा नहीं होता इट इज़ जस्ट अ ट्रिक यूज्ड बाय द एग्जामिनर टू ट्रिक यू ऑल ठीक है एंड इन करंट अफेयर्स मेजरली आई हैव सीन दैट गैस वर्क वर्क नहीं करता है बिकॉज uh, अगर आपको कुछ भी नहीं पता ना तो यू कैन नॉट मेक अ गैस वर्क डायरेक्ट क्वेश्चन होते हैं फैक्ट बेस्ड क्वेश्चन होते हैं इट्स नॉट लाइक आपने कोई कॉन्सेप्ट पढ़ा है और उससे रिलेटेड कोई क्वेश्चन आया तो यू कैन ईजिली मेक अ गैस वर्क गैस वर्क काम नहीं करता इसीलिए करंट अफेयर सबसे डिफिकल्ट हो जाते हैं और इसीलिए आपको बार बार रिवाइज करने की जरूरत पड़ती है ओके नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज हाउ मच इज द टोटल पल्स प्रोडक्शन एस्टिमेट फॉर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू टू ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री सो हियर गाइज वॉट इज द राइट आंसर वन सेवन एट पॉइंट नाइन जीरो लैख टन इज द राइट आंसर I guess I have again mistaken here, guys. It is not the one seven eight point nine lakh. It is two seventy eight point one zero lakh tons. Okay, it is my inherent uh, deficiency that I confuse the numbers. So that is why you may feel that in many number related questions I have marked the wrong answer first and then told you the right answer. But that is uh, the problem uh, that in despite writing the fact sheet sheet, I tend to forget the numbers okay and this may be a problem with many students theek hai mujhe lagta hai ki agar mere sath hai to koi na koi aap mein se aisa zarur hoga jiske sath ye problem hogi ki bar bar aap facts ko yaad kar rahe ho fir bhi bhul ja rahe ho hai na agar ye cheez aapke sath hai to iska again wahi solution hai ki aap bar bar yaad kijiye dekhiye mujhe itna time nahi milta session se pehle ki main 10 din tak ye ek hi cheez revise karti rahu theek hai तो वही चीज़ है आप एक स्टूडेंट हैं आपके पास फिर भी इतना टाइम होगा और आपको निकालना ही पड़ेगा अगर नहीं भी है टाइम टू रिवाइज द फैक्ट्स ओके अगेन एंड अगेन और ये चीज़ आपके साथ भी बहुत ज़्यादा होने वाली है अगर आप फैक्ट्स को बार 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 रिवाइज नहीं करेंगे स्पेशली न्यूमेरिकल फैक्ट्स ओके दैन नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज डैश वर्ल्ड हिंदी कॉन्फ्रेंस दैट इज विश्व हिंदी सम्मेलन इज बींग ऑर्गेनाइज फ्रॉम फेब्रवरी फिफ्टीन टू सेवनटीन by ministry of external affairs in collaboration with dash so 12th edition in collaboration with fiji the exact location is nadi in fiji okay so this is a place in fiji where this conference is being held which company launched the coland and as first fully automated escrow management solution for the coland so what is the right answer here cash free payments is the right answer escrow account i hope uh, all of you know what is an escrow account it is a very basic banking awareness term if you don't know about this term do read about this term because this is in the news so you can expect a question in your phase 2 finance paper related to the escrow account in a layman's term let me explain it 
वेरी बेसिक डेफिनेशन दूंगी मैं आपको इसकी एंड दैट इज दैट सपोज पार्टी ए एंड पार्टी बी हैव अ ट्रांजेक्शन एंड दे डू नॉट वॉन्ट द मनी टू बी कैप्ट इन आइदर ऑफ दीज टू अकाउंट सो वॉट दे विल डू दे विल ओपन एंड एस्क्रो अकाउंट एंड दिस एस्क्रो अकाउंट विल हैव द मनी ऑफ दीज पार्टीज ओके सो हु सो एवर ओपन दिस एस्क्रो अकाउंट डज नॉट ओन द मनी इन द अकाउंट द मनी बिलोंग्स टू अ थर्ड पार्टी ओके सो इट इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड अ थर्ड पार्टी अकाउंट ठीक है तो ये इसकी बेसिक डेफिनेशन है अपार्ट फ्रॉम दिस इफ यू वॉन्ट टू गो इन टू द डिटेल्स ऑफ दिस एस्क्रो अकाउंट देन आई वुड सजेस्ट यू टू गो इन टू दी कोर्स ठीक है जो हमारा कोर्स दिया हुआ है उसमें जा करके देखो उसमें हर टाइप के अकाउंट की डिटेल्स आपको फाइनेंशियल बेसिक फाइनेंशियल टर्म्स में प्रोवाइड की गई हैं ठीक है विच बैंक हैज लॉन्च अ पायलट प्रोजेक्ट नॉन एज नोन एज ऑफलाइन पे टू टेस्ट दी ऑफलाइन डिजिटल पेमेंट्स फॉर कस्टमर्स एंड मर्चेंट्स इनेबलिंग पेमेंट ट्रांजेक्शन इवन वेन देर इज नो मोबाइल नेटवर्क सो वट इज द राइट आंसर द राइट आंसर इज एच डी एफ सी बैंक who has been elected as a president of institute of chartered accountancy of uh, india so aniket sunil talati is the right answer so here we have completed the 100 questions successfully i would call it a success uh, so i hope you have enjoyed the content provided by me in this video in case you have any feedbacks you are free to provide it in the comment section below and jaate jaate main bas itna hi kahungi when ta हार्ड वर्क कैन बीट टैलेंट वैन टैलेंट रिफ्यूज टू वर्क हार्ड ठीक है तो अगर आपके पास टैलेंट है ना तो उसको तराशो क्योंकि हीरे की भी कीमत तभी होती है जब वो तराशा जाता है ठीक है चलिए ऑन दैट नोट हैव अ गुड डे एंड प्रिपेयर रियली हार्ड फॉर योर एग्जाम बिकॉज एग्जाम आपका कभी भी आ सकता है चलिए गुड बाय